Tonight on Trank Hill Radio, does Hell Yeah have a new drummer? Three guys walk into a bar, one of them is in the band Tool. And then Scott Weiland is in legal trouble even four years after death. Wow. All this and more coming up on Trank Kill Radio. Radio. Bow to it. What's going on, everybody? This is Trend Kill Radio. I'm your host, Sean Ryan. And I am the incredulous Coley Goldgate. Oh, we are coming at you from Cleveland, Ohio. So let's just get you subscribing right now before we start the show. Right, right. now. Dude, we'll wait. We'll wait. Anywho, well, thanks for that. <laughs> <laughs> right now, we have Hell Yeah. Formerly Vinnie Paul, God rest his soul. I mean, uh, you know, he was in Hell Yeah. This was his third like major band yeah did you just flip off vinnie paul what well, i did the sign of the cross and then but vinnie paul you know it's almost been a year since he has passed. i can't even believe that i know like, dude like we, we're in april right now what is 420 right now yo you wanna you wanna suck my small dick yeah i know i was gonna say you wanna <laughs> suck my <laughs> we're both about this <laughs> like a row <laughs> But it's incredible to actually see that, like, it has been almost a year. But, yeah, now that he has passed, and it's, let's just, like, backtrack real quick. Last month in March, Hell Yeah had released a single called 333. Not the Fever 333. Who sucks. Which, fuck them. Shame on you for being a band. The music's bad and you should feel bad. So they released this single and they have an upcoming album that is coming out later in the year that has the last remaining drum tracks of Vinnie Paul's recordings that they were working on before he had passed. Vinnie Paul, he had passed from cardiomyopathy, yeah. I believe it was the term, where he just he had an enlarged heart and his arteries were just full because like And you know what's crazy? He died of a large heart and uh, every story I've ever heard about the man. He had the biggest heart. Like, nicest guy in the world, so that's uh, not a shock. But, but his band, Hell Yeah, hell yeah, decided to go on, which is great. I love when bands Which, which I'm sure that it took a little bit of soul-searching, just like Linkin Park is right now. There are rumors they that are they are getting back together uh, without Chester, and I don't know how that's all going to work out, but that's besides the point. I mean, Hell Yeah, they have, um, they have some big shoes to fill because, I mean, you got the drummer from fucking Pantera. Pantera. Like, how are you going to replace a guy that... Uh, you can who's, never... Who's, whose image and whose uh, personality can, is larger than life. You can never replace an Adler brother. You can't keep a secret anymore in... Oh, no. In today's age. You sure can't. So there is a new guy in the rumor mill right now, Roy Mayorga. Yeah. He is the drummer for Stone Sour. Stone motherfucking Sour, a.k.a. And, Corey Taylor and the Stone Sours. Very talented drummer, though. No, no, no. I really do give him credit. I think it's so fitting, too. Because I think Stone it works. Sour and Hell Yeah, he could pull double duty and just go on tour. That would be a sick tour. That would I be know. a very cool tour. I mean, that would be fucking but really I think hard we, we because should really, drummers, I have the utmost respect for him because I can't. We should really emphasize it's just a rumor at this point. However, I, it's my favorite rumor of all of them out right now as far as who's filling that role. I think, it, I think it's a good fit. I think well, wait. What about when the Spice Girls go on tour? Is okay. Victoria Beckham going to be on it? I would hope so. I well, mean, it's otherwise... a rumor that, no, 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 she shut it down like a year ago. Okay, she well, said no, and it was going to be the four, first but then all, they were trying to get her back in together. Okay, first of all, first of all, we don't, there's a rule, we don't talk about the Spice Girls on the show, because you know how it makes it emotional. And fans had really started to make the rumors swirl around a little bit because Roy, he had posted a new drum kit on Instagram. He had posted two new photos that were very reminiscent to Vinnie Paul's actual, like, Just you know, his yeah. kit because they are big. Everything's bigger in Texas, motherfucker. <laughs> hey, brother. I want you bigger. I want you fatter. Yeah! Hell oh, yeah, bro! <laughs> yeah. Not a stone sour kit, <laughs> you know. So it, it leads to some very, very obvious speculation. And one fan of Roy had said, Heavy as a Vinnie Paul drum set. I think all systems are, or, or not, all signals are pointing at that yeah. being the. It's the, just a rumor right now, but I mean, it is just a rumor. It's not there confirmed. There are very few well kept secrets in rock and roll right now. So not that the drum kit isn't like are already obvious enough that you know that's probably going to happen, but at the same exact time, he was in a band already with Kyle Sanders, who plays bass in Hell Yeah. And on top of that, they had the guitarist, the guitarist from, from Machine, Machine Head, Head. and <laughs> the singer. <laughs> hilarious dude. from ugly kid joe at any rate the dots are all kind of connecting themselves if you look deep enough so uh, it is still a rumor but i uh, i think we can break it first and just say that's probably gonna happen you that's, heard it here first on you know. trend kill 
Radio. Radio. And on to our next segment. We have a story about three amigos. Not amigos. That terrible, terrible well, they're rap They're not act. terrible. Oh, fuck you. They want a Grammy. <laughs> but you know what? In a lot of ways, this is even worse. This is three worst people I'd rather hang out with. Uh, d- I would rather hang out with these three people than you any day. Wow. Fuck you, Sean. All right, so next we got this story. Okay, so I'm, like, super not feeling this story. It's a good story. Well, I mean, yeah, good story for you. We have a pond in the back. We have a pool and a pond. A pond would be good for you. And, you know, I'm just going to tag in a special guest we got in here right now from Impending Lies, the bass player KJ Chris Jones is coming in, and I'm going to let him fucking handle this one. Come on in, buddy. Tag me in, coach. Tag me in, coach, he says. Is that sports? I don't know. That's not sports. That's oh. you just said things. But don't. Welcome to the show. Well, thanks for having me. Oh, I didn't. It wasn't my choice. I would never. Well, let's be honest. We all know that I just kind of broke in here. You so. did. There was a gun involved. You said you weren't going to bring that up. So did you hear about this? Guy nope. Fieri, Sammy Hagar, and Amanda James Keenan walk into a. Uh, I don't want to hear your comedy right now. We're trying to talk news. No, this is serious. This is happening. They're no, doing it's not. A, they're doing a TV show together. It's, is it on VH1 Classics? Apparently it's on Access. It's uh, Sammy Hagar's <laughs> traveling food show. So Sammy. you've got a poor man's smash mouth lead singer, <laughs> the ex-singer of Van Halen, and a notoriously reclusive 90s rocker All who right. also is a wine connoisseur and creator. So- it's just one of those like travel food shows where he goes to different places and just kind of probably, I'm assuming, nitpicks apart different local hotspots and whatnots. Why? It, it's I it's don't, like the I odd can't- couple if they made it the odd trio. It, it makes no sense at all. I don't like it. I think it's probably obviously it's, it's a ploy because I think that's around the same time that the Tool album we've been waiting for 13 years to come out. Some of us have been waiting. I have not been waiting. I couldn't care any less. Well, Could not care any less. It's, it, it coalesces with the timeline. So here's my question. Are they going to be eating hot dogs? Super duper weenie. <laughs> Anything could happen. Anything? Could they do a threesome? You are gay. My whole take on this whole story is, what the fuck, number one. (laughs) Number two, why? Number three, who cares? But also a very firm and very optimistic... (laughs) Just just a head shake. No, so so we got a new Tool album coming. We'll see. So maybe this is some sort of weird cross-promotion or something. Like A lot of the Tool demo is older now, and they're watching cooking programs, I I, I would assume. (laughs) I'll eat at Sammy Hagar's restaurants when I'm going to the airport because there's one here at Hopkins. This whole thing doesn't make sense to me. I'm going to watch it, and I think you guys should too. I'm curious to see how they... I don't get it. I don't understand how they... I'm I'm trying to like process in my mind the phone call. Yeah, like, who called who? who who (laughs) Yeah, and like, who had to call me? Because that had to no. be the most awkward conversation I would, ever. Because he's notoriously reclusive. But he's and I've also never super weird. He's also super he weird. He is. So I'm assuming that he probably made the call like, yo, guy. I make let's, wine, dude. Let's <laughs> link up with Sammy. Let's link up with Sammy. And let's see what he's doing. He makes tequila. I make wine. I You're can, you. I, I could go for some work. quesadillas in Dallas. This isn't even a new story, honestly. it's. Just, I mean, it is. It's like when you, your friend sees like, hey, I saw an alien. And you're like, that's. No, you nah, didn't. No, you didn't. But also tell me more. And that's how I feel about this whole it story. Really is. It's like, it was just kind of handed to us like, hey, here's this, by the way. And I'm instantly like, I what? Think, I think. <laughs> Why is this a thing? I, I saw the promo. The promo photo for it, which you can look at right here, looks a lot like the promo photo that we did for tonight's episode, which you can look at right here. Yeah, it makes sense. Somebody somebody who is a fan of our show is like, who the fuck is this guy? Why is he involved? I mean, you got two rock stars and a guy that looks like a rock star. <laughs> Former rock star. Let's, he, not go, let's not go so far as to call the singer of Smash Mouth a rock star. Guy Fieri <laughs> is the human embodiment of that bowling shirt with the flames on it. Oh. That is gangster. Here's the only thing I ought to slap your white ass. So, Mine's. not a story, but this is KJ. We brought him in because he's got a cool show coming up soon, which we're going to talk yeah. about once it, it occurs. Jesus, take the wheel. Well, thank you, sir. And it is the Lord's Weekend, <laughs> oddly enough. I play a bass in a band called Impending Lies. I'm the newest member. Been in about a year and a half now. We have a show coming up at the Foundry on May 25th. It's us and our friends, Critic City. They just did their debut show at the Avenue Tap House, of all places, and it was packed. You could couldn't move in that room. That's a big bar. It is a big bar. I mean, for those of you that have never been there, it's a Lakewood bar. It's huge. My question is this. 
whose dick did you have to suck to A, get into impending lies, and B, get on this show because it wasn't mine, Sean? Again, I didn't have Sean. to. I, I broke in here. And there was no fellation for oh, the guest yeah. spot. Oh, yeah. Okay. Fellation to be in the okay. band, absolutely. It, 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 Exclusive. It was Davo. Our guitar player, James, uh, hit me up, uh, and he was like, hey, we need a bass player for this Chimera show that we're doing. And I was like, sold. First show with you guys. I'm playing the Agora Theater to a sold-out crowd with Chimera. Done. <laughs> Perfect. I hope, in my heart of hearts, in, in all seriousness, and I mean this, I hope I never see you again. I, you know, honestly, I wish I could say the feeling wasn't mutual, but mm-hmm. God, the sooner I get your face out of my field of vision, the sure. just, my life's going to sure. Well, the way door's better. over there. One thing I forgot to say. Yeah. The show is almost sold out, by the way. Imagine that. Yeah. yeah. Bet you feel like a dick now, don't you? No, I don't. Well, you're not getting a guest list spot now, so. No, come on. No. That, 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 that ship has passed. No. You had you had your gift. You squandered it. Bye, Felicia. Thank you for coming back, Sean, because that was miserable. <laughs> Fucking worst goddamn situation I've ever been in. I'm kidding. I love KJ. That, you know what's funny? is That would have been awesome had that story been a real story. But who the fuck cares? And on a final and kind of dark note, this is a very heavy story. An incredible burden. Yeah. For the people that surrounded Scott Weiland, uh, former vocalist of Stone Temple Pilots and Velvet Revolver, along with his solo endeavors, you know, he has a lean against his estate. His estate. Yeah. yeah. Everything he has. For $818,569.62. And that is the low end of the offer that the government or whoever is saying, okay, this is this is the minimum that we want from you. They want more. Yeah, Scott... Legally, uh, that's what he's obligated to. Scott apparently had not paid his governmental taxes, and they, they filed right before the April 15th date just saying that, you know, he owes all this money, and it burdens his estate, and it, it burdens his ex-wife, Mary, and it burdens his widow, Jamie, along probably with his children. And... and more that you, we probably don't even know about. Let's just round up to nine hundred thousand dollars. A million that, bucks. All right, yeah, yeah, even a million bucks. It's a million bucks. His estate is only worth one point six million, and so the representative for Scott Weiland's estate is his ex-wife Mary Weiland, and uh, she's got to just kind of put up with all this kind of shit. She's on the hook for his estate for nearly a million dollars. She does not have the estate. Does not really. Have, I mean, they do, but they don't. Like that's it, and that, there's not a lot left. I know he didn't pay his taxes for three years right. to the government, and you know, like it's basically the Wesley Snipes of rock and roll. Fair enough. Not only that, but last year, uh, Wyland's estate was hit with a lien by the California State Tax Franchise Board for almost two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. There's nothing left. I know, and then they also said that his children were due. $4,000 a piece each month. Now, Wyland's estate, he only gains like about uh, $265,000 annually. It's not I mean, there. they're just bleeding. It's not there. It's just bleeding And it won't out. be there in the future. Mary has audited and gone to appraisers and tried to figure out like what, you know, what, what she could sell. Yeah, she's, and, like, she's been trying some memorabilia and all sorts of things. Just to kind of make up... Make the, up the difference. Make up the difference. And you can't. You can't in these situations. It fucking sucks. I mean, Scott Weiland, he he was plagued with a lot of just mental problems. Yeah. I mean, he, he was dealt with due to years of drug abuse, I am sure. Do not get me wrong. Scott Weiland was one of my fucking heroes. Like, yeah. I love Scott Weiland. We've talked Ask about him, him a million we, times. We have talked show. about this guy so much. And, like I, like, I just think he was just deeply misunderstood. He had a lot of, he just had, he had bipolar disorder and a drug problem because of bipolar disorder. And, you know, he found out his parents were uh, both dying of cancer back in 2015 before he passed. Really very heavy weight on his shoulders all the time. And now he's in this situation, well, his estate's in the situation, his family's in the situation that sucks real bad. And there's really nothing that they or really anyone can do about it. And it, 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 I hate this story so much. I know. It's just a really it's unfortunate terrible. situation that he put his whole family in, ex-family and new family, yeah. even his, uh, his widow, Jamie. Where, you know, uh, after he had passed, like, Mary Weiland, she was just all about trying to get some of that fucking Scott Weiland money because she felt entitled to it and dragged his name through the mud yep. and just wanted, like, two million. And Jamie had gone on to say, just like, I don't know what mattress you think you're going to flip up and, and find, find two million dollars. But because, fuck off. <laughs> yeah. Because it's not there. It doesn't exist. Because Scott was broke. Broke. After all the albums and the comeback tours, 
and you know, Velvet Revolver. I mean, they they made a lot of money. Velvet Revolver was like one of the last rock bands of the era where you could actually make money, yeah. and it was dude, you're just name and status. Oh yeah, I mean, you got you got Slash. three guys from Guns N' Roses, and you got the singer from Stone Temple Pilots. I mean, clearly it's, it's going bucks, and it was, it was. And I mean, like, God knows what the hell he could have been paying for in restitutions. Oh yeah, uh, no, he and, had a lot going on, and we, just yeah. drug abuse too. I mean, like, that's what really plagued his whole career was just how much money he spent on drugs. On drugs, it adds up, man. It just does. Those and demons, it, they deduct your dollars. Everybody always says that. This is a prime example of that because this is a guy who one of the greatest frontmen, one of, of the all greatest time. of all time, and now we're in this situation after his passing where there's no revenue there's no income substantial income coming in that can support his legacy and no, that's like his, i said 265,000 annual it's i mean sucks but it is what it is we'll keep you updated for sure just because i think we both care about this story we both care about that legacy and it sucks and it's a bummer but at the same time it needs to be talked about because maybe it'll spread awareness maybe some rich asshole out there will create a gofundme and then he's not an asshole anymore yeah, That's maybe not spend a billion dollars trying to restore Notre Dame. Yeah, fuck that. And you Give know, that actually... money to Scott Wilder's kids, man. I don't care. Maybe not all of it. Give me some, too. I want some. Give us. Sponsor us. Can I have like a thousand dollars? Can we get sponsored by the Catholic <laughs> guys? <laughs> and that is all we have for this week's installment of Trent Kill Radio. Come back weekly. Like the show? Subscribe to our page. Our fucking Trent Kill Radio page on YouTube. Subscribe. Subscribe. Go to Facebook.com slash Trent Kill Radio 216. Give it a like. Yes. You know, I'd like to thank KJ Chris Jones from Impending Lies that will be doing a show at the Foundry. But if you are in Cleveland, I mean, fucking figure out a way to get tickets, You're man. probably not going to get tickets, but try. I'd love to thank him for coming on the show. Yeah, and uh, thank you, Coley, as always. And thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Sean Ryan. And I'm Coley Colgate. And this is Trend Kill Radio. Radio. Bow to it. I'm not gonna do it on camera, though. I'm not gonna suck your dick on camera. That's ridiculous. This is, this is we're trying to do a show. We're recording. We're uh, trying to kill radio. My girlfriend <laughs> hates when I do this. <clears throat> she goes, "You look like a basic bitch when you do that." Well, you I'm are. like, I didn't even realize that I was doing it. You are a basic bitch. No, we're gonna. This is a 45, maybe an hour tops. Oh my god. We're gonna get so much hate mail from who? I get them. Trust me. <laughs> well, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Eat a dick. Present it. That'd be a whole different show. <laughs> that actually did seem mean. I didn't mean to actually no, say no, that. No, too. it's fine. It's <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just like, no, because I actually wouldn't want to hang around with J- Maynard James. <laughs> <laughs> or, or Guy Fieri. <laughs> that would actually be. A I'd funny hang out story. with Hagar. I'd hang out with Hagar all day.